Welcome, and thank you for joining us for Restoration Center's Sunday Worship Service with Dr. Thomas E. Keyes, Jr. and Co-Pastor Simone Keyes. Get ready. Declare that the year of 2022 is your year of recovery. Restoring broken lives. Some people leave out the one in touch. He's pursued your heart every step from the start. He loved you so much that he died on the cross. Restoring broken lives today. everyone how y'all doing out there welcome to our Sunday morning worship glad to have all of you on this morning worshiping with us um, we are excited about God and uh, what he is doing uh, in this very hour um, we're on live um, Facebook live um, you can look later on our YouTube channel and see the service we're also on the phone uh, we've had to um, go back in because of all of the COVID protocols um, and all of the things that are taking place it is just really um, it's really crazy so many of our members have been um, inundated with COVID co-pastor here uh, she tested positive this week she got a mask I got a mask we taking them off to do the service um, but it's just crazy. Um, 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 so for the next couple of weeks, um, we will be um, online. Uh, glad to have you on, those that are clicking in. Glad to have you on, Melissa. Happy birthday to you. I see you on January birthday. Shout out to you. Um, let's, let's get started. Let's um, open this service um, with scripture and prayer. Uh, our scripture for the day will come from Ephesians 6, 13, and 14. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14, um, the word of God says this, Wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Let's, let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to come once again to share your word with the people of God, to worship you and praise you for you are truly <clears throat> our God, our Savior, our Deliverer. And God, we thank you for breakthrough and deliverance. We thank you for healing. We, and we thank you for just continuing to watch over us in the midst of all of the things that are going on in the world. I just pray now, God, your blessings on this worship experience. I pray that your word will go forth, that we will um, lift up praises to you, where heaven will just rejoice and you will be glorified. I pray thy kingdom and thy will will be done. Minister your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Well, as I said, I got co-pastor here. Uh, she's on the tail end of this COVID, praise the Lord. I was in Houston all week, so I was I was, I was quarantined by, by proxy, and so she's doing a little better today, so we're grateful to God for her being on with us, and she's going to sing for us. Good morning, Sheila. Uh, Angela, good to see you on, all that are on. Uh, Co-Pastor going to lead us in song. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Let them see your face. Dance oh, goodness. Here. They did see me last night. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> The church um, didn't see. Yes, and, and we were we were talking about this song last night and just gonna sing just a little bit of it. We was talking about not being shaken. God is fighting for us, God is on our side, He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome. Yes, he is overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live. I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free. In Jesus' name, 
I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame. Yes, he has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be new moved. Jesus, you are here. Very good, very good. Praise the Lord. She said she had something a little different this morning, and I'm grateful that she was able to do that this morning. She couldn't talk two or three days ago, so God is so good. Our announcements for the morning, quickly as we can. Uh, every week we have four times of prayer scheduled uh, for you to be a part. Pastor Johnson, it's good to see you on another uh, recovering individual. Um, um, we have prayer four times a week at Restoration Center. First of all, we pray. Every Monday at 12 o'clock noon is midday prayer. Um, love for you to be a part. I lead that midday prayer effort. See you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Would love to pray with you and for you and for your families. Every Tuesday mornings at 6 o'clock a.m., co-pastor um, leads our ministry in prayer. Um, she does a fabulous job. Um, with that, um, um, I, I, I'm just I'm just proud of her and her efforts in leading that six o'clock prayer. And then Saturday nights. At 6 o'clock p.m., I lead prayer at the church. Um, you just come and you pray. Uh, about 6.30, 6.45, we're gone. We just love for you to come and just come and pray with us to intercede. Uh, kind of like an uh, old-fashioned prayer meeting. Uh, we just we really enjoy our prayer. And then finally, every Saturday night, last night, co-pastor was on. Every Saturday night, she leads our women, women of work in prayer at 9 o'clock p.m. So that four times that we can pray a week, uh, we would love for you to be a part of all of our prayer times. On Tuesdays, we have Perfected Word Bible Study. We're in the book of Exodus, and we're studying, and we, we're going to probably finish Exodus in the next um, four to six weeks. Um, so we would love for you to be a part of that. We're in Exodus 33 right now. We're going to Exodus 34. Um, we'd love for you to be a part of our Perfected Word Bible Study. Uh, our worship services, let me say this, our worship services um, will continue online until further notice. Um, like I said, the COVID outbreak, we, um, the COVID has been going on for three years, but this is the first time we had an outbreak in the church. Uh, we've had three of our kids under 12 um, to have COVID at the church. Uh, Co-pastor uh, Celeste tested positive yesterday. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. Pastor Johnson, on and on, just so many people. Uh, I was, I, I, talk, I was talking to Lawrence and Candy yesterday. I said I couldn't have church because I didn't have my co-pastor, didn't have my executive pastor, co-pastor didn't have exist, uh, uh, an assistant. We didn't have a usher at the door. Lawrence, the, 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 the chairman of the, of, of the usher ministry, is down. It's just crazy. So um, we, we won't open until further notice. So it'll be about two or three weeks. We'll just stay out, try to get ourselves healthy. And the Lord works this out because I'm going to be out of town. So I had scheduled everything while I was out of town. While I'm going to be out of town, I'll be traveling for the next two weeks. So God kind of worked this thing out. I, I was I was upset about missing, so I won't miss. It's online, so it's all good. I would love to see y'all uh, uh, <laughs> online for the next couple of weeks. Once everything gets kind of settled down, uh, we'll get back into worship on services. Also, our offices will be closed until further notice, so Sharon won't be in. Um, your financial reports, I want to say this, everybody's financial reports for your taxes. Um, Daria did complete them in the midst of her COVID and all that other stuff. Um, what we're going to try to do is we're going to, we generally give them to you in service. Um, what we're going to try to do is mail them out to you, to your addresses, um, so that you can get them. If it's, if it's, a, if it's urgent, you contact Sharon or Darielle, uh, and they will get it to you. If you need your taxes ASAP, because you're trying to, you know, get your tax refund or whatever, contact um, 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 Elder Darielle Williams or Elder Sharon McKee, and they can take care of your report and get you what you need. If, if it's not urgent, uh, we'll mail it out to you, or we'll get it to you when we go back and start services. Um, also, um, you can catch our services um, online. Um, the tape tape will be on um, YouTube.com and also on Facebook, so you can look at our services online. Um, the month of January, y'all know January is the greatest month of the year. Y'all know I was born in January. A lot of famous people born in January. Mm -hmm. David Bowie, 
Elvis Presley. Actually, watch this. Alexander Hamilton, born January the 11th. Muhammad Ali. Um, Virginia <coughs> Woolf. Today is Melissa. I, I, saw, I shouted out to Melissa this morning. Happy birthday to her. I may mention of all of that, but probably the greatest American born in January was Dr. Martin Luther King. As you can see, I'm wearing his shirt this morning. Uh, I decided to wear these shirts the last two weeks. Because these, these shirts that I'm wearing, you can purchase them at Walmart. Um, it's the Third Good Marshall College Fund. When you buy these shirts, um, the proceeds um, go directly to the um, National Negro College Fund. I don't get no money for doing this. There's no proceeds to this. But if you want to um, have an impact in a child's life, uh, a lot of times people say, I want to do something. Well, you could buy a shirt for yourself, and then some of the proceeds will go to help a, co a kid go to college. And so if you want to do that, you can be a part of that. Uh, they had Walmart. It's like $10 for, for a shirt. Um, not only that, I want to give you all the website. If you just want to give, um, the website is tmcf.org. That's TMCF, which is the Third Good Marshall College Fund. org. You could go to that and you could give, and that that corporation or that organization just gives to kids to go to college, kids that can't go to college, and there's so many kids um, that want to go to college. There's so many African American kids that 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 want to better themselves, and they don't have the finances. And the reality is, people don't know how much it costs to go to college. It costs to go to college. I was talking to somebody the other day. Um, and they were trying to take like six six hours, and and now the classes are based per hour, and each hour, which is which you got to take a three hour course or a two hour course, each hour is like some in some cases five six hundred dollars an hour. So for one class, for one class, you got people paying fifteen hundred two thousand dollars for one class, and many times this is in public institutions. So uh, if you want to be a blessing, Thurgood College Fund. It's, it's a blessing. Dr. Martin Luther King, shout out to him and all of my January birthdays. Lord have mercy. We're excited. You know, I, guess what I found out today? Morris Chestnut born January 1st. Lord mm -hmm. have mercy. January is the best month. It's all good. Love you all so very much. Let's move on. A lot to say. Um, it's offering time. It's time for you to give. Um, we still got bills to pay. There's still things that we have to do. I've been talking to pastors over and over about adjusting because with COVID, we have to adjust and people are not coming in. And as a result, some people won't give because they're not coming in. But I want to thank y'all because everything is paid. We're still doing everything. So if this is your month to tithe or this is your week to tithe, please make sure you tithe this morning. Please give an offering. Everybody can give an offering. Everybody can do something because there's still things that we have to do. Uh, all week on my mind, the summer is coming. Uh, we're going to have revival uh, in the month of April. Uh, and uh, we, we need to get those air condition fixed. We also need to get another van um, to pick up the kids because Lorenzo complaining about the van breaking down and all this other stuff. Shout out, Lorenzo. How you doing this morning? So anyway, um, um, the ways you can give, you can go to our website, restoringbrokenlives.org. And if you go there, you can, you can give there. If you go to the Push Pay app, you can give there. Um, you can text 77977 on your cell phone into RCIM. M I N in all caps, you can give that way. Our cash app is dollar sign R C B C Bozier. R C I'm sorry, R C I M Restoration Center International Ministries Bozier. And you can do that in all caps. You can give that way. And then there's a cash app for myself, dollar sign Pastor Keys 15. And then co pastor has her um, cash app, dollar sign Lady Simone K66. You can give. We want everybody to give. I'm going to pray for your gifts right now. Um, you can just go into your cash app, push pay app. I have the push pay app on my phone. I have automatic giving. Um, you can give that way. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much um, for blessing us to be able to give um, in the midst of all that's going on. Um, we still have things that, that have to be done and, 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 and issues um, that are financial and we pray, oh God, that you open up um, your windows of heaven and bl bless those who give. And God, open up the hearts of those individuals that are home this morning. They're uh, in the leisure of their bed or on the sofa, or at the kitchen table, wherever they may be. Um, I pray that you touch their hearts so that they can give, that they'll go and take their cell phones and give online or their iPads or their computers 
and give online or call in whatever. And whatever they give, oh God, I pray it will be a blessing to their lives and to their families. Give it back to them, some 30, some 1,600 fold. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. Um, last announcement that I forgot to make, and I don't know how I skipped it. Um, the Valentine's Gala has been canceled. The Valentine's Gala has been canceled. I don't know why I forgot to tell y'all that this morning. Um, the Valentine's Gala uh, was supposed to be, I think, next next Saturday. Um, we canceled it. You know, Candy has COVID. Lawrence has COVID. Who are, who's our um, sponsors or leaders in the area of our marriage ministry? And so if they're sick, they're out, um, they're going to be back up. But there's so much preparation and things that have to be done. So many other people that are sick. So we're just going to cancel it. Uh, and we'll come next week. Now, brothers, that don't mean Valentine's Day cancel. Y'all better get some candy and stuff. I'm going out of town. My, my, my people, could, my, my daughter could tell you I'll be out of town for the next two weeks. And I already pre-purchased my stuff last week. So y'all make sure y'all take care of them women on Valentine's Day. Amen. And thank God. Well, with this, all this being said, it's time for us to go in the Word of God. Co-pastor going to sing a song. I asked her to sing something specifically for us. I don't know if she used to sing it. I don't know if she know how to sing it. But I asked her to sing it this morning. And following this, we're going to go straight in the Word of God. And then we're going to pray and have some fun um, the rest of the day. Not me. I got to travel to Moorfield. So y'all pray for me. I'll be on the road. Uh, for the next three hours. Amen. Good morning. Y'all doing okay? Y'all forgive me for touching my hair this morning. Forgive you? <laughs> Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can. It seems like it's never enough. <clears throat> and what do you say when your friends turn away and you're alone? You're so all alone. Tell me what do you do when you've given you all and seems like you just can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can. You just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the gift of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? And how can you smile when your heart has been broken, filled with pain, filled with pain? Tell me, what do you do? When you've given your all and it seems like you just can't make it through. Child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. You just stand. Tell me, what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like you just can't make it through? You just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through after you've done all you can, after you've done all you can. Tell me after you've done all you can, you just stand. You just stand. How do you stand? Stand through the storm. Stand through the rain. Stand through the pain. When you've done all you can, don't you give in. Don't you just bend, you just stand, don't give in. After you've done all you can, you just stand. You sing that like you sing it all the time, girl. That's all right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand. That's what I want to talk about this morning. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. Father, bless the word. Speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you Hallelujah. may be able to withstand in the evil day. Glory to God. And having done all to stand, stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. As my wife just said, I want to I wanna re read just the first stanza of the first verse. Donnie McCurkin says, what do you do when you've done all you can? And it seems like it's never enough. What do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? Tell me, what do you give when you're giving your all and it seems you just can't make it through? Well, you just stand. When there's nothing left to do, you just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all that you can, you just stand. The word stand today, it is um, defined as to endure. It means to remain firm. Paul, the writer um, to the church at Ephesus, um, he visited this church on his second and third missionary journeys. In other words, he, 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 he went there uh, on his second missionary journey, on his third missionary journey, and he spent a lot of time there. Um, actually, he spent three years uh, in Ephesus. Uh, when he left Ephesus um, the third, on the third missionary journey, uh, he left Aquila and Priscilla in charge, the husband and wife, pastor and co-pastor. And eventually, uh, he made Timothy the bishop, um, the pastor uh, at Ephesus. And he writes this church, um, this letter, um, to encourage them because they were going through a whole lot of stuff. Actually, chapter 6, it ends with encouragement because there were so many hardships and so many difficulties that they were going through. And so Paul writes them to let them know, listen, listen, when, when, when you're going through all of this stuff, when, when life just gets cr crazy and out of hand, um, all you have to do in those situations he writes to the church and tells them, just stand. Right now, January 30th, 2022, at 1022 a.m. in the morning, we have a multitude of hardships in the world in America. COVID-19 is wreaking havoc all across the world. And now... Um, yesterday when I left Houston on uh, a Friday night, um, I was looking, my mom, and Elaine was looking at TV and we were about to leave Saturday morning to come back. They said that there's a new variant. Uh, we're dealing with Omicron now, but there's a new variant that's out and it's called stealth, like a stealth bomber. I'm like, look, we just, we just got through COVID, COVID-19. Now we don't been through Omicron and now there's a new variant called stealth. And they say now uh, a lot of the things that y'all taking like uh, uh, Mucinex or Dayquil, um, these, the, the new variant is now um, um, stronger than any of the medicines that you're trying to use for, for the cough or you're trying to use for the fever. It's crazy. Hardships. As of yesterday, since the beginning of the pandemic, worldwide, there's been, listen to this, this yesterday, these stats from yesterday, 373,570,646 cases reported of COVID worldwide. As of yesterday, 5,677,272 people have died of COVID worldwide, over five million people. United States, over 75,481,122 cases reported. Not, not the ones that people, you know, getting COVID and not reporting it. 75 million cases over the last three years, that's 25 million a year reported for COVID. It's crazy. The U.S. totals, <laughs> listen to this, as of yesterday, 906, 
906,861. We're 100,000 people away from a million people in America dying of COVID over the last three years. That's over 300,000 people a year dying of COVID. Hmm. Right now, as we speak this morning, 28,691,741 people have COVID. And I got two in my house. Lord have mercy. I'm just trying to tell. And that's reported cases. That's not the people that's not reported. That's not the asymptomatic people. What do you do? What do you do? We are in hardship. We are in crisis right now. What do you do? United States and NATO are about to go to war with Putin. <laughs> Putin is tripping over there. He's trying to send. He sent. He's not trying to send. He sent not 100,000 soldiers. He sent 100,000 troops to the Ukrainian border. It's so bad. The United States don't have soldiers. The United States are now paying our children that are 18 to 21 $10,000 signing bonus just to go get killed or go get shot at in war. What do you do? What do you do? ABC News reported, <laughs> watch this, that in January, it's January 30th, Lord have mercy, it's January 30th, and since January 1st, 24 police officers in the United States have been shot on duty, four killed. 24 police officers have been shot. And the young man, uh, the young man in Harlem, it seemed like they set him up. It's just crazy. What do you do? COVID all over the place. People shooting the police. If they're shooting the police, you know what they're going to do to everybody else. Russia is on the banks of, of, <laughs> of the Ukraine about to start another world war because NATO has to back and the United States is the key to NATO. It's, it's a trip, y'all. What do you do? Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 14, after you've done all that you can, Paul says, stand. Now, he gives us two Greek words. He says the word three times. In verse 13, he says, withstand, and then he ends stand, and then he comes back and says, stand therefore. So he uses two Greek words. He uses well, two English words also, withstand and stand. He uses two words, withstand and stand. The word withstand is the Greek word antistime. I hope I said it right. It means to set against or to resist. When you can't, because watch this. What are we going to do about COVID? I was laughing. I was talking to Colleen. I called to check Colleen. I said, Colleen, how you doing? She said, I did everything that I can. She said, it just look like if you look at somebody the wrong way, you get COVID. You, you stay six feet apart. You put your mask on. You use your hand sanitizer. You, do, you get your shots. You do everything. And still, you catch it. What do you do? Well, Paul says you have to withstand. And you have to stand. The word withstand, anticipate, I hope I said it right, it means to set against. It means to resist. It means to, watch this, refuse to quit. Lord have mercy. Because many of us, it's like, this is what we've done. Y'all remember the song? It makes me want to throw my hands up. Yeah, <laughs> we, all just, we just won't quit. I quit. I, I just give up. And, and right now, this is not the time to give up. This is not the time to quit. It's time for us to withstand. We cannot quit. Church, we cannot quit. Believers, we cannot quit. You know, um, the police violence, the, viol the violence against individuals that are being harassed by the police, all of the things that are going on politically all across the United States trying to um, take people's right to vote. We cannot just give up. We can't be talking about my vote doesn't count in. You know, it's just so many things. We have to withstand. We cannot quit. You can't stop fighting. Lord have mercy. I was just talking to a young man the other day, and I told him, I said, look, the key to life is you got to fight. When you stop fighting, you die. When you stop fighting, you die. Paul says we must withstand. We cannot give up. 
We cannot give up. We got to be like the little engine that could. I think I can. I think I can. With all of this adversity, with all of these things coming against us, we have to withstand. And then he comes back and says, not only withstand, he says, stand. That word stand is the Greek word histomy. It literally means to keep your place, to stop, to stand still, to be immovable, to stand firm. Watch this. Here we go. It means to be resolute in your decisions. Yes, God. It means to be planted. I have a belief system. I believe in God. I trust in God. I'm going to stand right where I am. I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to stand my ground. I am embedded. Um, the, um, um, the writer of, of Psalms, who is David, he says it like this. I'm going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. My mama's favorite song, I shall not be moved. We must stand. What I find now, I find pastors not standing. I find church members giving up. I find people being movable now. Now, well, 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 I've been praying to God for this situation to change. It ain't changing. So now you join in, you join in the, um, you know, the black Israelites or you join in uh, some cult or you, matter of fact, a lot of folk that gave up on God altogether. We must stand. We must stand. Listen, listen, this is not the time to retreat. This is not the time to fall back. We must stand. We must stand. We must stand. We must stand firm. We must be immovable. We got to be like a tree planted so deep that we cannot be moved. <laughs> so the question I need to ask, and I'm, I'm, it's three points and I'm done. Well, Pastor, because this is the question that I would ask if I was you. How do I stand? I mean, all this stuff going on, you know, you know I try to go to work. I can't, they sent Timothy home twice this week. He tried to go to work, but they sent him home. They sent him home because, you know, they had the whole second grade at the school he teaches. All of them, all of them, the whole, the whole second grade has COVID. They sent Timothy home because his mama got COVID. They didn't want him to infect anybody, but he probably infected his mama. Lord have mercy. My <laughs> I mean, I mean, how do you stand? How how do you stand? What how, how do you do this thing? How how do you stand when 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 you have police getting shot and then the police are inflicting violence on many other people? I mean, how do you stand? You know, I was in Houston. You know, the news. You know, they shot somebody in the head. The, the, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Janelle said they killed somebody right by her apartment complex. It, it's, it's a reality. The question is, how do we do this? How do we stand when, when our military, it seems like we just got out of war and we're going back to war. We now, we're now in Matthew 24, a time of wars and rumors of wars. We either in a war, we just came out of war, or we talk about going to a war. Yes. How do we stand? All my mamas with their babies, that's that's 15, 16, 17, about to go to 18, or those that are 18 to 25, it seemed like they might reinvoke the draft. What do you do? What, what do you do in times like this? How do I stand? How do I remain resolute in my faith when I'm doing, I'm washing my hands, I'm taking my shots, I took my booster, I, I've done everything, and I still have COVID. How do I withstand and maintain my faith in God, in the midst of all of this. Here we go. <sighs> Exodus chapter 14, verse number 13. <clears throat> Moses, um, he leads the children of Israel out of Egypt, which we just taught in Bible study. Um, they, they, <laughs> they leave Egypt and they, they wind up at the Red Sea. When they get to the Red Sea, um, the, the picture in the, in the Bible is Moses at the Red Sea. He has two to eight million Israelites with him. Pharaoh's army is pursuing them because now Pharaoh is mad because his son has died and all this other stuff has happened. And so Pharaoh is pursuing. And where God has them situated was between two mountains. So they couldn't run left. They couldn't run right. 
um, they couldn't go over the Red Sea. And so um, Pharaoh's army behind them. So the people starts complaining to Moses. And they say, you brought us out here to die. And now Pharaoh going to kill us all. Moses says something. Exodus 14 and 13. What do you do? Mm. When you got mountains on each side. Jesus. And you have the Red Sea in front of you. And Pharaoh's army behind you. And Moses said to the people. Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. How do you stand? Number one, you got to be free from fear. I want to talk to everybody that's scared. Everybody that's terrified. Stop being scared. The word of God declares... In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. That word fear is the Hebrew word yare, um, which means to be terrified. And right now, everybody's terrified. Everybody, nobody wants to catch it. Nobody wants to die. And nobody wants to catch it. But the fear is the problem. As we stand, we cannot stand in fear. These people were afraid a Pharaoh and his army and his chariots, chariots, what they were going to do to boys that's on the chariots, how they were going to kill him and what they were going to do to him. And many people are afraid now. Are we going back to war? They're shooting all the police. I got to get me a gun. I got to get me a Glock. I got to get me an automatic weapon. You understand? <laughs> people are afraid. I can't go nowhere. So many people have isolated themselves in their houses. They don't leave. Many people now are ordering their food, having their food dropped off at the door, and they will not leave. They, they order Walmart, have Walmart delivered, have their food delivered, medicine delivered. People are living. Watch this. It's, it's cool if you want to live like that, but it ain't cool if you're living that way because of fear. That's not God. Yes, That's Satan that has you afraid. You can't be afraid of going places. Wait a minute. I, I, I'm free. We sing the song, praise the Lord, I'm free. We, You know, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But you're in bondage to fear. Yes, God. You cannot stand in fear. He says, listen, don't be afraid. Fear ye not, stand still. Fear ye not, stand still. You can't be afraid of the obstacles of life. You can't be afraid of people. You cannot be afraid of what might happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We going to trust God. Do you understand that God is, I want to say this, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Now, omnipresent does not have anything to do with time. Because God does not live in time, he lives in eternity. So God already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Yes. It's not a surprise what's going to happen tomorrow because he's already in tomorrow. Yes. We used to sing the song, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. Why do I know this? Because I know he's in tomorrow. So why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? No, y'all pray for me. Why are you afraid? Stop being afraid. Do not operate in fear. Do not operate in terror. I trust in the Lord. Jeremiah 1 and 7 says this, But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I'm a child, for, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their oh faces, God. for I am, I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. So why y'all afraid of people? Why y'all afraid of what folk going to do? Why are you afraid of COVID and all this other stuff? Do not be afraid. Do not operate in terror. I trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Also in the text, he says, watch this. Don't only not be afraid. He says, be still. He says, be still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. That word still is the word yastab in the Hebrew. It literally means to sit. It's kind of like a dog, it's like a master telling his dog, sit. Moses tells him, sit down. Watch this. Here we go. Let me help you out. One of the problems that we're having right now is 
Many of us that are doers, we feel paralyzed. Many of us that are doers, we feel like I need to do something. I need to do something. I need to go somewhere. I need to, you know, how do I fix this? How do I fix this? We can't fix this. We got to sit down like a dog and let our master, who is the Lord, work the situation out. They, Moses said, stand still, y'all sit down and watch God do. Mm -hmm. And when they watched God, God opened up the Red Sea. God allowed them to cross to the other side. They did nothing. All they did was sit down and watch God. And then God killed Pharaoh's army. It was God that drowned them in the Red Sea. It was God. It was not, watch this, it was not them. So if we're going to trust God, the way we trust him is we just got to sit here and watch him. Watch this. That's why there's nothing we can do with this COVID thing. I told you, we have 900,000 people in America have died. Over 5 million people in the world have died over three years. We got to stand still. What are we going to do? We're going to do about the police violence. We're going to stand still and we got to trust God that he's going to bring us out. What are we going to do about people shooting the police? We're going to trust God. The Ukraine, we're going to sit down and we're going to trust God. We're going to sit down and we're going to watch him. <laughs> you got to sit down and trust him. Standing is not doing. We got to stand firm in position and trust God. I remember we used to sing a song, let God do it. We got to let God do it. Zechariah 4 and 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. It's not what you do, it's what God does. So how do we stand? We stand, I'm not afraid, and I'm going to trust God. I'm going to sit here like a dog. Watch this. Next point, watch this. How do I stand? I must stand trusting God. Job chapter 1 verse 22. And y'all know, most, most people know the story of Job. Most of y'all don't. But the story of Job is this. He was a, he was a multi-millionaire. Mm -hmm. And Satan went to God and Satan said, look, let me, let, me, let, me, let me just take his children. Let me take some of his cow and cattle and all this other stuff. Let me take his money. And after I take his money and stuff, he will not trust you. He will not stand with you any longer. He will quit. He will give up. He'll become a sinner just like everybody else. Job opens up <clears throat> by saying he was a perfect and an upright man. Not perfect in perfection, but he was a man that perfectly and completely trusted in the Lord. Watch this now. So now, God done took everything, and now at this point, um, his children die in a whirlwind. And the messengers get back to him and tell him that his children die. The Bible says, Job chapter 1. Verse 22, it says this, And all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. He did not sin. He, when all the stuff was happening, he didn't go get loaded. He didn't get him a blunt. Um, he didn't get him a fifth of Ciroc. He didn't get him any liquor. Uh, you understand? When all this happened and he got money problems, he didn't try to hit the lotto. Uh, he didn't go to the casino trying to make it all better. <laughs> he did not he sinned not and then he didn't charge God charge God means blame God because many of us we blame God how could God be God and allow all this stuff to happen he God he knew it was going to happen he knew it was going to happen he showed us in scripture that prophecy prophecy is the future for us but it ain't prophecy for God because God is already in the morrow I told you I told you he's omnipresent he's everywhere He's in eternal, in, in eternity. Remember, as I told y'all, we look at time as a line. Time is in the beginning God. But who was in the beginning before God and then in the end, heaven? So for us that are in the church and in the world, we got a beginning and we got an end. But God is in eternity past and in eternity future, which eternity, time sits inside of eternity. So, 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 so the reality is, uh, uh, um, Job didn't know what's going to happen, but God knew what's going to happen, and jo Job had to trust God. And what I'm telling y'all is, right now, what do we do? We trust God. Watch this, verse chapter two, verse nine. 
Then said his wife, he done lost his children now. Doest thou still retain thine integrity? You still won't get drunk? You still won't cuss God? He said, he said, why are you man? She said, why are you maintaining your integrity? Why are you still trusting God? In the next verse, she says, curse God, Job, and just die. Mm. But he said unto her, verse 10, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall I receive good at the hand of God? And, not, and we have not shall receive evil. In all this, Job <laughs> did not sin with his lips. He trusted in the Lord. Well, that's a question. Are you trusting God? Jesus. When you feel your pain, I've, I've been, you know, I've been doing a lot of work, so I got sciatic acting up. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm my back acting up, and I got, you know, taking a leave to leave the pain in my sciatica and my back. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. But, but are you trusting God in the midst of all of this? Are you trusting God with the COVID and the symptoms? Many of you have fevers. Some of y'all have chills. Some of y'all have to go to the hospital. Praise the Lord. I, I, praise the Lord. Many of you are not uh, as sick as, as it started in the beginning because you were vaccinated. So you're sick, but it's not as bad, but it's still bad. People are complaining of headaches. People are complaining of 103 fever. Uh, my wife complains of just being tired all the time. Loss of energy. Don't have the strength that she had. Listen. But are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust God? And it's a trip because most of us trust God when everything is good. But do we trust God when it's bad? And that's what Job says in the text. He said, well, when everything was good and I was a millionaire and all my children was living and I had all my calves and stuff, I trusted him. And you ain't even talk about cursing God. Not I lost everything. You want me to stop trusting him that I lost everything. He was the, he's the same God without the stuff as he was with the stuff. Are you going to keep trusting God? I'm saying as you stand, we're just going to have to trust God through here. With all of these things going on in the world, we can't, we can't control Putin. We can't control the January 6th election. We can't control who's going to be the next um, chief justice on the Supreme Court. You know, none of that stuff. All we can do right through here oh is trust God. We don't know. They, they could be they could be marching on Ukraine right now. NATO troops may have to get in order. And if NATO gets in order, if we're going to be a leader in NATO, that means America going to be in another war. And we're going to have to trust God right through here. And the thing that's so crazy, okay, we're talking about a war, a war during COVID, and we're talking about a war when we still have not recovered from the Persian Gulf. We we'll have to trust God. We gotta trust God. Supplies the Lord. Have you been in the grocery store? That 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 I when I left, I left I left Tuesday, so I went to Walmart on Monday to get cough drops. They didn't have cough drops. Our brother Wilson called me. He was upset because he couldn't find elderberry. They had elderberry in in Walmart. But check this out: if you look at the new elderberry, they don't even fill up the bottle. The bottle is about this big, and it's half a bottle of elderberry because they don't have a lot of elderberry. Because everybody using that, they think that's gonna help them, help the immune system and all this other kind of stuff. Because you, you're looking for stuff. Elderberry is cool. Vitamin C is cool. People that's taking zinc, all that other stuff. But but. What about God? What about trusting him through here? Yeah, I took my shot, but I got to trust God. We have to stand. Watch this. Stand firm, unmovable, un unwavering, not afraid. I'm going to stand here and trust God. Oh. So, Pastor, finally, what's going to help me to stand and not fall? Because the reality is I feel like I'm about to fall. I feel like I really feel like I'm about to just <laughs> collapse. And, and, and it gets overwhelming. It gets overwhelming. It really does. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being just like y'all. It gets overwhelming, all of this stuff. I mean, I mean, we just got through Omnicron. We, well, I'm, I'm still in the midst of Omnicron in my house. And, and now that we're dealing with Omnicron, here comes stealth. I mean, something like named stealth, it's, it, it, it kind of... 
I'm like stealth. I mean, what that? What does that thing do? I mean, all I when I think of a stealth, I think of a stealth fighter. You know, you can't see it; it hits you and kill you, and you ain't see it. That, that's what I thought of when I thought. You know, how do how do I stand and not fall? What what's gonna help me to stand and not just just lose it? Well, Matthew chapter seven, and I'm closing. Verse twenty four through twenty seven says this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these words of mine and sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, they shall be likened to a foolish man, which built his house on the sand. When the rain descends, the floods came, and the winds blew, beat upon the house. It fell, and great was the fall of it. Simple parable, but I love it. James came. I'm sorry, Spencer came. Used to sing a song, into each life, some rain must fall. But the sun will shine after a while. I don't want to grab the after wild part. I want to grab the, grab the line into each life, some rain must fall. This parable shows us that um, no matter how good you are, no matter how righteous you are, you're going to deal with stuff. It's going to rain. You're going to, you, you're going to have rain, y'all. It's going to rain. You, it's, it's going to be... It's, I tell you, I, uh, the other day in, mid, in midday prayer, I went to... John 16 and 33, in this world you shall have tribulation. It's, it's a reality. Tribulation is a reality. Jesus gave that text to the church, to the disciples. It was his believers. It was his boys. He told them, you, go, you shall have, not you might have, not if you good, um, stuff bad not going to happen. Life don't work like that. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Hard stuff hits the just as well as the unjust. Good people die just like bad people die. Good people get shot like bad people get shot. It's just a reality of life. And so Jesus poses this, this parable. You're going to have rain hit your life. It's real. Rain will hit your life. Hardships will hit your life. But how do I stand when the hardships come? Because when they hit you, it wants to rock you. And, you know, playing football got hit a lot. And, and, and some hits will rock you. Some hits, it will stun you. If you ever got in a fight and you got punched, It'll, it'll stun you. If you've ever been stunned, it'll, you know, you got to shake and get your senses. You know, you see little, little fairies or whatever. You know, it's a reality. We, when we get hit, we are stunned. It's going to rain on the just as well as the unjust. But the difference in the parable, it says, people that build their houses on sand, when the rain comes, it falls. In other words, What's going to help us to stand is our foundation, what we're standing on. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I want to say this, and I'm done. Uh, in New Orleans, because we're below sea level, um, they build all the houses on pilings. And pilings are these big old sticks, if you will, and they, they drive them. Um, where the church on, on Dale Street is built, um, when they built it, there's certain spots. When they put the piling in, it was sh it shot. And so some spots, they have three pilings because they needed the piling to go all, all the way down to the core of the earth. So they would cut, they put one, put one on top of another one and another one in there, cut it a certain length, and then they put the cement around it. Well, up here, up north, they don't, they don't do foundations like that. Huh? They just, you know, put some, they put some dirt in and they build a house, but they got a new subdivision up the street. And I thought it was so interesting. I, I was explaining this to Elaine yesterday. New subdivision up the street, they're building a house, right? Let me tell you what they did. The man got the tractor after they cleared off the land, and he dug a hole. Listen to me. The hole was so deep that the whole tractor was in the hole. It was deeper than a house. And he dug up all the dirt. And if you go past the lot right now, all the dirt that he dug up is in the backyard. And what they did is they brought in new dirt and packed it. And the foundation is some kind of new, new, new dirt. I don't know what it was, but they packed it down there. 
and it's been sitting for about 30 days. They haven't built on it. It's just sitting. Because they understand that the key to the house not falling is the foundation. The key to the house, if you want your marriage to stand, it's about the foundation. If you want to stand, it's about the foundation. If America is going to stand, it's about the foundation. Listen, I know we want to stand. I know we want to stand firm. But if our foundation is not Christ, we will fall. The house that was built on the sand, it fell. The house that was built on the rock, it stood. So watch this. After they put all that sand in, guess what they're going to do? They're going to form it up, and they're going to put some cement on top of that. Because the foundation in New Orleans, the piling, it went all the way to the core of the earth. And after they hit the core of the earth, they put iron all in there, tied the iron in, and then they put the cement on top. And that's why the church is still there. That's why all them hurricanes came and that bad boy has not moved because of the foundation. If you go to if you go to Greater Bright Morning Star right now, the ground next to the church has sunk. If you walk out one of them back doors, the ground has sunk almost two feet. But where the pollens are, <laughs> it ain't moving nowhere. Where the cement is, it's not going near place because the key to not falling is your foundation. The songwriter says these words, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. The United States is going to fall if we don't stand on Christ. It seems like we lost all morals. It seems like we lost all principles. The world is tripping. If we don't get back to Christ, we're going to fall. Our family structure, tripping. Uh, it's just crazy. Everybody wants Shaq. Everybody with baby mamas. I was talking to Courtney. And he, he made mention of one of the girls. She got eight children and seven different baby mamas. Baby mamas. Mm -hmm. Seven baby daddies. I see yeah. baby mamas. Baby daddies. She got seven different baby daddies. Come on now. It's, that's the fabric of the family. Bad foundation. Bad foundation. I ain't talking about her. What about the, what about the seven dudes? Mm -hmm. What's up with that? They, what's going on with that? You know, and now these kids have to grow up with eight siblings. It's eight of them. And seven different men coming in and out the house will be in their life till they die. Mm -hmm. Foundation got to be Christ. Foundation must be Christ. As I close, um, it's no, it's my, my, <laughs> My favorite group is New Edition. <laughs> and they sing a song called Can You Stand the Rain? And the song is about um it's about relationships actually. And um they're talking about need somebody that's going to stand with them when the rain comes. So when they sing it they talk about a woman. But if you could translate it to a relationship with Christ, we all need somebody to stand by. Us. Hmm. Ralph Tresman, now Johnny Gill starts it, and, and I, 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 could, I could read it or I could quote it, but I want to, I want to grab Ralph Tresman's line to close. He says, "Well, I'm gonna start with Johnny. Let me start with Johnny." Johnny says, "On a perfect day." I know I can count on you when, when that's not possible. Tell me, can you weather the storm? Now, Ralph, here we go. He said, because I need somebody who will stand by me through the good times and the bad times. She will always be right there. <laughs> and then the chorus is, sunny days, everybody loves them. Tell me, baby, can you handle the rain? Storms will come. We know this is sure. This we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? See, you can't stand the rain if you don't have the right foundation. So pastor is telling y'all we got to stand. We got to stand with Christ. We can't be afraid. We got to trust God. And we got to make sure that Christ is our foundation. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I love y'all. 
I pray that y'all heard this word. I pray that this word is bless you. As I close, I'm, I'm, I'm finished preaching, but there may be somebody that doesn't know Christ as Lord and Savior. There may be somebody, Pastor, um, I don't know Jesus. I'm not born again. I want to say to you, it's simple. Confess with your mouth, believe with your heart, how hard that Jesus Christ is God. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the son of the true and living God. He was a Jew born in, <laughs> in Bethlehem. Um, his, mayor, his, his mother's name was Mary. It was a virgin birth. It was a virgin conception. The Holy Ghost came upon her according to scripture and she was born. He was Jesus wrapped in flesh. That's why the Bible calls him Emmanuel, which is God with us. And Jesus Christ lived 33 years. And on the 33rd year of his life, they crucified him. They killed him. Um, and after they killed him, uh, he laid in the grave three days. Um, one preacher said he used the borrowed grave uh, of Joseph Arimathea because he wasn't going to stay there long. The Bible says three days after his death, he got up out the grave with all power in his hand. One scripture says God raised him from the dead. Other scripture says he got up. The reality is God got him up, but he got himself up because he is God. Lord have mercy. And Jesus Christ is now our savior. Um, some people say, well, Pastor, why the whole process? What, what's the purpose of the process? The purpose of the process is, according to Genesis, Adam was the first man. Adam sinned. According to Romans chapter 5, when Adam sinned, all mankind, all of us now, are now sinners because of Adam's sin. Jesus now, according to Romans 5, becomes our second Adam. And now Jesus Christ, he lives a perfect life. He's a sacrifice on the cross. And now his blood now cleanses us and brings us back into fellowship with God. Long story short, if you believe that Jesus is God, you can have heaven in eternity. I tell people all the time, I, one of the things that's funny is we fight dying. Dying is a reality of life. Ain't nothing you could do. I, got, I guess the older you get, you understand uh, you, you, you don't want to die, but the reality is you know there ain't nothing you could do to stop it. It's going to happen. And if you don't know Jesus, According to scripture, if you don't know Jesus and you don't accept Jesus as your savior, um, you will not go to heaven. Um, you will not spend eternity with him. You will spend eternity uh, in a lake that burn it with fire. All you have to do is believe in him and accept him. That's it. It's not deep. It ain't, ain't scientific. It ain't nothing great. It's simple. Believe and accept him. Um, that's the simplest I could do the gospel in three seconds or three minutes. So if you want to know Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer with me, and I want to lead you to Christ today. Repeat after me, Heavenly Master, forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ, God, is your son. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he rose again from the dead. I accept him into my heart. Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you for being my God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. According to scripture, we believe that you are saved right now. I believe that you're saved. Um, um, you can um, um, contact us through um, our, our Facebook page or you can contact us through Messenger, our church web page. Um, we can get you information on salvation, um, whatever. If you want to be a member of our church, we can take care of that too. If whatever you need, um, we try to meet those needs. I see all of y'all on. It's a blessing seeing all of y'all on. I love y'all so very much. Candace, it's a blessing seeing you on. We praying for you and your entire class and all that y'all going through. Uh, all of those that are on, we love y'all so very much. I'm going to let Co-Pastor say something. She's sitting here with her mask on, y'all. She's trying to keep me safe. Uh, so I'm going to let her say something and we're going to close. Hey, y'all going through. Y'all remember that old vacation Bible school song, okay? <laughs> Standing on the promises of Christ our King. Through eternal ages, let our praises ring. Glory to the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ our Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. <laughs> what a blessing. I love my wife. I thank y'all so, so much for being a part. Y'all pray for us. Um, we're headed to, um, well, not we, uh, myself and uh, one of our nurses and our, our, our first assistant. We're headed to Moorville, Louisiana, 
Uh, I'm leaving in about 20 minutes. Um, we're headed down to Alexandria. Pray for us. Um, pray for also Pastor Morris and her um, um, pastoral anniversary. We thank God for all of you. Also, I'll be uh, with co-pastor now. If she feeling best. She done made a, met her five days of quarantine. We're headed to um, D.C. and Baltimore and Florida, Lord Jesus. Um, we're helping Thomas to move. So just pray for us and our travels and hopefully our strength. Uh, extra strength comes back. Oh, also, um, next month, next month, my mother-in-law's birthday. So shout out to my mother-in-law, um, Miss Johnny May Spriggins Harris. Next month, she makes 80 years old. So God is so good. We love y'all so very much. I see y'all. Have a blessed day. We love y'all. Bye bye. Oh, Saints fans. Uh, 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 <laughs> what I want to tell y'all on um on Netflix. There's a movie about Sean Payton. It's a, it's a real life movie about Sean Payton and the year he got suspended from the NFL and the year he spent coaching his son's little league team. Y'all can check it out. It's on Netflix. Y'all have a blessed day. It was very good. I saw it last night. Bye-bye. Home, Home Team. That's the name of it. Bye-bye. He loved you so much that he died on the cross. The story broke a lot today. Jesus Christ.